I'm pleased to have Ryan Hall with me today, who is, uh, I'm very honored to have him writing a chapter in our uh, book about the blessings and wisdom of the great pause that has been uh, brought to us through COVID-19. Ryan is the author of the book Written in the Stone, and he is the, a podcaster and owner and coach of Royal Hearts Coaching. So I wanted to welcome him to this, this author interview today. Well, thank you so much for having me, Liz. I appreciate the invitation. Great to see you. So I gave a little introduction to who you are, but would you share a little bit more about yourself? Anything that you'd like us to know about you, what you're up to in the world? Absolutely. Well, I, I've got a lot of slashes on my resume right now. I want to... Uh, author. I've got a, I've got another manuscript in the can that I'm just dying to get out into the world. But author, um, life and relationship coach for Kings. I, I work with a lot of men who are, who are really looking to become those heart-centered leaders in the world. Uh, it's what I do as a life coach, but uh, also a podcaster. I'm the, uh, I'm the host of a podcast called Solar Powered, S-O-U-L apostrophe R, of which you were a guest on my podcast a few weeks ago. And um, yeah, I'm, uh, you know, originally from Alabama, but uh, living up here in uh, Connecticut right now. And the weather is starting to feel a little Alabama-ish right now. <laughs> it does feel, is this what Alabama feels like? I've never been there, but. Well, well, well the hum humidity is not quite as oppressive. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's about, it, it, yeah, it's probably about 90 today, you know, decent humidity. But imagine this kind of weather instead of at, you know, middle of the afternoon at like eight o'clock at night. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, That's you've fun. got, you, you, yeah, you've got kind of curly hair yourself. It would probably, you know, it would probably just, you know, your hair would probably just quit. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh, goodness. How did, um, I'm curious about how COVID-19 affected you. What was going on for you at the time? Well, um, just to just to kind of set it up a little bit, the entire year of 2020 has been quite uh, it's been quite challenging. Um, it's been quite challenging. Like just for example, um, when when the year began, I was working. Um, I had just gotten a job as a, a copywriter at a small ad agency in White Plains, New York. Um, and on the third day of the year, I was informed that I was no longer a copywriter at this ad agency. Uh. Um, and needless to say, that threw me for a pretty big loop. Um, but that kind of, that kind of sets things up. I mean, for most of the last year, it's, you know, it's been pretty, it, it's been pretty rough, um, dealing with some personal issues, dealing with some some health problems in my family, my sister battling stage three throat cancer, which thank God she has beaten. So I'm um, very grateful for that. But to answer your question, Liz, when COVID-19 hit, um, the first thing that happened was, this was before any of the, you know, any of the things got shut down and anything like that. I've got a great punchline around all the shutdowns, but this was before any of the shutdowns happened is before COVID-19 hit, my dog and I were told from our former landlord that we needed to find another place to live. Oh. In no uncertain terms that this, that this creature right here, Pete. his name is Pete. Pete. Hello, Pete. <laughs> but my dog and I were told that we were no longer welcome where we used to, uh, where we used to live. Um, I am staying in a hotel to this day, mm -hmm. um, but, um, but, you know, really when COVID-19 hit, it just, you know, combine the, um, combine all the stuff that happened earlier in the year and kind of the, the, the snowball effect, it just really drove me into a pretty deep depression like, you know, like a seriously deep depression. 
Um, but you know, I managed to, I have managed to keep my head above water. I've managed to make some strides in a lot of areas of my life. I talk about that a lot in my chapter um, in The Great Pause, but I managed to make a lot of strides in my life um, and to do a lot of good work on myself and um, have, uh, yeah, I, I feel like I've come out of this, even though I'm still kind of in process on it, come out of it stronger and more determined and more kind of more resilient than ever before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I know when I'm, when I read your chapter, it is a story definitely of resilience, right? Um, that is, I found very inspiring and heartening because I know it's something that people can relate to and it's good to have that sense of connection, right? Um, that we can keep going no matter what. Um, was there anything that I know we're we're still living this right we're still living during this time we're still learning lessons from all of it um, no this is definitely not past tense not past tense yeah <laughs> um but so far was there anything that surprised you that you learned from it would you say yeah yeah that yeah there was I, and I think the biggest thing that has surprised me of how uh, of of what I have learned from this pandemic is just really how resilient I am. It's just how willing I am to to get back on the court, to you know, to climb back on the horse. Sometimes literally, but to climb back on the horse and to just keep pushing forward, keep pushing forward and just not quitting even when i wanted to quit many many times i never did and i have started to create some i've started to create some real gold in my life and not just uh you know in uh in you know personal life professional life all because i never quit and all because i never stopped working on myself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know that you have, you have written the book, um, written in the stone, and I believe you do um, articles also for, is it? I do, yes, no, I write for, I write for a website called The Good Men Project. Yes. <laughs> um, I have okay, been. And it's something about good men, what's it called? <laughs> Uh, it's a it, it's a project of some kind, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I have been a featured columnist for the Good Men Project for the better part of four years now. Um, I was invited to write for them while I was um, while I was going through the accomplishment coaching training program, which you're a fellow alumnus of yourself. Uh, but when I was going through accomplishment coaching, I had submitted a couple articles to them and I was invited to write for them and I don't write for them weekly anymore mm -hmm. but um because that got to be a little bit too like a little bit too much mm -hmm. uh because I want to give them gold every week but I have been a featured columnist for them for the better part of four years and it's a you know it's a really it's a great it, it's a great publication to write for because we deal with men's issues, but it's on a lot more of an elevated, educated, more of an enlightened path. I mean, we still deal with a lot of a lot of the same subject matter of you know publications like Maxim might, but it's not all you know. It's not all sex and relationships. There's plenty of it, but it's a it's a lot more of like and more of an intelligent, elevated path. That's excellent. And I'm curious with, um, as, as an accomplished author, I, will, I know I hear a lot of people that are just getting started with writing or publishing, right? And I'm curious what advice you have for people that are writing, but they haven't published yet, that they're just, you know, they're, they're working on completing their first project. What advice do you have for people that are in that boat? Keep going. I mean, you know, stopping is the least, it just the worst thing that you can do when it comes to 
creating a, um, when it comes to creating creative projects, and not just writing either. I mean, anybody who has any kind of creative aspirations, the reps are going to be the key. The, you know, just the practice, the reps are going to be the key. When, when you're writing a new project, when you're writing a new, a new book or anything like that, there's a very good chance, in fact, a very good chance that the first few drafts that you're going to do are going to be trash, are going to be absolute garbage. Yeah. But you can't let that get to you. You absolutely can't let that get to you. So, you know, my best advice is just to keep going, keep pushing forward. Um, don't do it alone, mm -hmm. but just keep pushing forward because if you've got your heart into this, if you've got, if you've got passion, if you've got a a spiritual connection with the material, then it is going to come out. It is absolutely going to come out. I second all of that. Absolutely. Right. Get it out there. Get that, get the writing in a habit. So it just flows and it's okay if it looks like trash at the beginning. Yeah, it, exactly. I mean, I use an example a lot of, do you think that, you know, some of the best musicians in the world, do you think they just magically walk out on stage and can just hold an audience in the palm of their hand the first time they strap a guitar around their neck? No, it takes practice. It takes repetition. It mm -hmm. takes, you know, it, it, it takes sitting in your bedroom at two o'clock in the morning, making mistake after mistake. Mm -hmm. before you can walk out on stage and hold an audience in the palm of your hand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Same with actors, same with athletes, same with anybody. Mm -hmm. It takes practice. And it's funny sometimes, I think, as writers, we think, look, I'm going to write it and it will be perfect. And I will really, right? And it's not the case, of course. It's, it's mm -hmm. an art. It's, it's it, yeah, it's an art and it's a, it, it's a practice. I mean, sometimes this, sometimes this life, and I'm sure you know, sometimes this life is hard. Sometimes this life yeah. is difficult to, to just stare at a blinking cursor, just mocking you when you know you have something to say, but it's just mocking you just mm -hmm. like, almost like you can hear it blinking. <laughs> Right yeah but yeah just just to answer your question just keep going just mm -hmm. keep going and you know i've gotten a lot of feedback i've had a many of the authors from the great pause on my podcast mm -hmm. and several of them have told me i did not see myself as a writer before i did this but son of a gun you are yeah. so exciting dive in right dive in yeah. Jump in with both feet. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on today and, and talking with me and sharing with everyone about your experience and about your writing. What's the best way for people to get in touch with you and to learn more about you and your work? Absolutely. Just, you can find me on my, uh, on my website, royalheartscoaching.com. Uh, follow me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Um, at Ryan Hall writes, um, or you can just shoot me an email, Ryan at royalheartscoaching.com. Excellent. Thank you, Ryan. Great to see you. My pleasure, Liz. Thank you for having me.